How is it December? How has that happened? I have no idea, but it is the busiest time of year for me, which is really exciting. I do enjoy schedules, I do enjoy deadlines, I do enjoy challenges, but it does mean that I'm going to try and be conservative in my plans for this month. Ah, uh, conservative, maybe that's the wrong word. I'm only going to be showing you four things that I want to make this month but I do have a lot of other videos and ideas and obviously vlogmas to do as well so I have no idea if I'm going to get these done but I would like to. I'm tentatively christening this Redmas <laughs> because there is despite that fabric there there is a definite theme for the projects for this month but it's also kind of Coatmas and Knitmas all rolled into one so without further waffle let's have a look at what I would like to try and attempt to get done this December. First up is the fabric I have right in front of me here which mum's been eyeing up for a year now. I bought it at the beginning of this year from Lady McElroy. It is eight and a half meters of wool coating in a beautiful bright red that I absolutely love. Unfortunately so does mum. <laughs> now there's eight and a half meters here so you would think I would be able to share this with mum but my plans for this fabric are fairly extensive. I would like to make the McCall's 6800. Now I had intended to try and do two of those this month, one the Velvet Coat refashion and then another one, this one at the much longer length that I think is going to work much much better for me. I would really like to have a bright winter coat in my collection. If you've watched my coat collection video up here you know that I made a, oh, there's also a bunch of shorts for the Nicole for the I don't know words are hard for the Vogue 9040 I think I have that number right could be 9044 one of the two probably not either of them but we shall see there will be a picture on screen but I made that earlier this year and I love it but black is just not the right color for me also that coat I started making that just before I started back on keto full-time and I lost a bunch of weight so it's ended up way too big for me so my sister-in-law has it and she loves it and she does wear black and looks amazing in black so I need to make myself another winter coat. Now I do have, as I say, many of those, but I don't have one that is not super, super dressy, but also very, very warm. I have a lot of very warm, super dressy coats, and honestly, I don't need any more of those, but I don't have anything that can be an everyday coat in a color that I love. The one that I wear the most frequently is my Gertie coat, my Gertie princess coat in the kind of khaki drab olive color, and I love that thing, but it is a single layer of cotton twill with a polyester lining. I do find it warm enough for shopping expeditions because you are in and out of shops all the time, but for walking around it is not the warmest of coats. So that's where this comes in. I bought this from Lady McElroy Wholesale along with a bunch of other things that I had up for sale beginning of this year. This one's all for me though. I would have bought 10 meters of it but they only had 8.5 left so that's what I've got. At least that's what I think I've got. Yes, 8.5. It's 80% wool, 20% polyamide. It's called Campbell, color red. It is 155 centimeters wide. So this should be more than enough to make the long version of the McCall's 6800. And, although not this month, a Vogue biker jacket. I think I would really like that out of this fabric as well, if there's enough left after cutting out the 6800. I have a spoonflower lining in mind for this one. It's a chocolate biscuit print. It's a cotton silk and I'm going to line the majority of the body with that fabric, but the sleeves I have bought some of the viscose acetate lotus lining in cocoa for lining my Berta dandel and also the sleeves of this one because the cotton silk from Spoonflower is not slippery enough for the sleeves for my preference. I do like a slippery sleeve in my coat. So yeah that's what this is going to be. It's going to be quite the undertaking. I have to alter the pattern because I've already traced it all out and I have made the pattern once before and I have done quite a few alterations to the top of the pattern using the tailoring book that I bought and I will link down below because I think it's absolutely brilliant and highly recommend it. So I've already done all those changes to the top of the pattern but the length was not right for me so I need to elongate them all but as I say I want to 
tweak and refashion my velvet coat so I need to draft the bottom pattern pieces cut those out of calico to work out how much velvet I need to buy and then stick those pattern pieces onto the originals so that I can then cut these out of one as one singular piece there will be no seams on this coat I'm so looking forward to this I do need to buy the cotton flannel to interline it that is my preference I do like interlining my coats and this is actually a fairly thin coating it's a it's not a thick fluffy coating so I do think that this can take an interlining really really well so I do need to buy a little bit more fabric for this one it's going to be red cotton flannel I will list my source down below I'm really excited about this I think this is probably going to end up being my most used coat for quite a while but yeah that's what this one's going to be and if there's any left I will give mum some but it's probably only going to be enough for a jacket which is not what she's after I don't think so there may be another coat adventure with mum coming next year I've got to put this away now it's very heavy and I've got to try and not kill you in the process <sighs> done <laughs> as i say four projects that was one this is number two i have had and been threatening to make up this combo of silk velvet and silk embroidered dupioni for the longest time there is a little red dress project oh my battery's dying stay right there there you go power for you I'm trying to say something different i say the same thing every time yes these fabrics you've seen them multiple times i have been threatening to make this dress multiple times but it's not a dress that exists or at least the pattern i haven't seen it that it exists anywhere there's uh, parts of it that do i am thinking about franken patterning rather than drafting from scratch because i am definitely not an expert but i want to try and make a dress where this is the midriff and the skirt and then this is the top part of a cowl neck bodice with the little cap sleeves that i absolutely love i think it's going to look glorious now i have three meters of this fabric and it's i think 110 wide so there's not loads of it and i am trying to decide do i want to cut three panels because there's definitely enough for three panels plus the midriff pieces and then do box pleats box pleat it in so that it's i use all of it and there's the very little waste that way or do i cut out my three quarter circle skirt panels because again there's enough fabric for that but that does give me lots of off cuts but there might be enough off cuts for like the collar of a jacket the collar and cuffs of a jacket that could match with it although that does mean that i then have to try and either match the base red of this silk or something along the lines of this silk velvet which is very difficult to do online as we know nothing i have back here is the right red silk for that i could of course maybe go for a green because we've got lots of green in the leaves and, and stems on this could go for a purple because there is a lot of purple in here so there are other options that might be slightly easier to do but it would be to be then worn as an entire outfit so i'm still not 100 percent sure what i want to do about this i like both silhouettes because there is going to be the nipped in waist and there's going to be volume coming from the waist with the box pleats or the beautiful full of a circle skirt three quarter circle skirt if I go for that option I don't know what do you think in the comments down below let me know what you think I'm kind of leaning towards the box pleat option just because it's going to be the best use of the fabric and this is one of those beautiful irreplaceable fabrics that you, you know I'm never going to see this exact one again because even if I can find the exact print it's going to be like a different weave so slightly different color variation that kind of thing so let me know what you think. Should I go for three quarter circle skirt in panels or should I go for box pleats with three panels and zero wastage? I would not let any of this go to waste if I do do the three quarter circle skirt route and end up with the funny pieces left over. I will work out ways of using all of those pieces, believe me. But yeah, that's what this one or these two fabrics are going to be. And that's been in my head for the longest time. So nobody's going to talk me out of the cow neck and the midriff bodice it's just the skirt that I need some help with so as I say that pattern does not exist elements of it do in different places and as I say I'm not ruling out smooshing elements of it together but I also could 
draft from my blocks that I made earlier this year. Whichever way I go, I'm going to need to make a muslin and a wearable muslin. So I went through my stash and I have dug out these two. This is a polyester fabric that I got from one of the knitting and stitching shows and it was a remnant. So I think I have just over two meters of this. This is definitely going to have to be a box pleated skirt rather than anything else. And then this I got from Saudi Arabia to actually match a lace that I have back there but it was the perfect match for the kind of background of the spots it looks really really good together and this obviously is drapey now i have three meters of this i'm going to be able to line the skirt of, of this with this as well but i obviously need to make a muslin and these two fabrics whilst being beautiful are far less precious to me than the red silk and velvet so i will be making my wearable muslin out of these two and we will see how that goes wish me luck technically that's one project <laughs> even though there's going to be two outcomes from it there's going to, that's one project next up we have these fabrics again that's right i'm going back for a fourth attempt at the star trek dress you might think i'm crazy but i have an idea of how i'm going to make this style of dress work for me i've been trying to shoehorn my preferences into somebody else's style by completely straight up copying Bianca and the dresses look amazing on her. They just don't work for me as pencil skirted dresses so I'm going to use a completely different approach this time. I'm not telling you what pattern I'm going to use. It will be a surprise and hopefully at some point in December the making of the Star Trek dress video which started in January this year is going to come out. I have a lot of footage, about 35 gigs of footage so far so it's going to be an interesting editing process but I think I have come up with a idea that's going to give me a finished garment that I actually like and want to wear out in public that works for me, that looks good on me, that is relatively easy to put Put all these things together because it's basically a knit dress at this point but it will <laughs> fulfill that space dress or space queen dress as, as Bianca has christened them it will fill the itch for that dress but in a way that works for for me rather than me just trying to steal di directly from her wardrobe because as much as I would love to do that and it would be so much fun to do that I genuinely don't think I would feel comfortable in those clothes because of the way that I like to get dressed so I'm putting my own spin on my fourth iteration fingers crossed I can get it right if I can awesome if not I will put this one to rest I promise but yes Star Trek dress number four is coming later this month. And then as if that isn't enough, along with Vlogmas and all the other little projects that are going on over this month, I would like to try and do a bag in a day. It's going to be the Carter Messenger bag, which I already have a summer along for, and I absolutely love my blue version that I've made. And I've been wanting to make a new one for the longest time. The only thing that was stopping me was the lack of hardware. So, so hot, we're having a discount. I ordered and I have put together my Carter Messenger bag kit. This is the lining fabric. I do have a meter of the red Rex faux leather from Emmeline Bags. I had fully intended the next car to messenger that bag that I make to be from the mustard Mora leather because I have a bunch of that left over from my Horiath project that I did earlier this year and it would also mean that I don't need to make another shoulder strap because I've already made one with rose gold hardware that would be interchangeable between the two. But when I was placing my order from, from So Hot for the power trip pattern, the extra hardware and magnets and bits and pieces that I needed, it got to the point where I was so close to the free shipping total that I added the extra Rex leather on and now I want a red Carter messenger bag. I will come back to the yellow one at some point but this month is going to be a red Carter messenger bag with poppies and butterflies as the lining. I love that bag, I do use it frequently. It is not the biggest bag. I had initially wanted to scale it up but my printer is not allowing me to do that in the way that I wanted to so I'm going to cross that bridge another time and possibly with the yellow one when I come to it. I think I have enough faux leather left to do that but this time around it's going to be the original size. It's going to look really cute with the coat and the Star Trek dress. I think I probably need more of an evening bag for the velvet dress and I'm not ruling out attempting to squeeze that in as well but I'm not going to say that I'm definitely doing that because I already have a million things that I need to do this month and adding more to them is probably not the wisest idea. So that's it. Four 
four projects for December. What do you think and which one are you most excited about seeing? I'm really excited about all of them. The bag in a day is going to be really fun because it's going to be a challenge that I'm, I'm trying to do. I've done dress in a day videos, there's a whole playlist of those. I think this will be a fun addition to that playlist. I am over the moon about getting to my coat. I've been so excited about it but I have been waiting for this month to get it done so I'm really excited that I get to do that. I think it's going to be absolutely epic. I love my green velvet one, it's just the wrong length so the longer one is going to be awesome. I am really hopeful for the Star Trek dress, I think it's going to work, I think I have come up with a genius idea. You'll have to let me know when you see the finished result later on this month and the whole kind of saga over the year that's been going on of trying to make this dress work for me. And then the draft your own cow neck party dress out of those two precious precious fabrics. I am equally parts excited and terrified about it. This is meant to be a year of projects that scare me so it's about time that I give this an attempt because I think I can do it justice and that's what the wearable muslin fodder is for to find out if that's true. So yeah let me know in the comment section down below which one you're most looking forward to seeing and why. I'd love to hear what you think. If you've enjoyed this video you might want to check out this one here.